Hello, it's Gem Games here once again, and in this video we are going to add the first obstacle to the game. So yeah, let's get started. First, let's create a new folder and let's call it obstacles. Okay. Now let's open it and let's create a new blueprint class. Type actor and let's call it barrier. Like that. Let's open it. And now we want to add a static mesh to here. Let's call it barrier, for example. And let's search for a road barrier, this one. Okay, like that. Now, what we want to do here, we want to actually rotate it 90 degrees on the set axis. Like that. Now it will be rotated correctly on the game. So let's compile, save, and we can actually close this now. Okay, now let's go to the blueprints and let's open the GM Endless Runner. Okay, uh, we want to actually create a new function. Let's call it main spawner. Okay, this will be the function that spawns all the power ups and coins and obstacles and stuff like that. But uh, for now, we will just spawn obstacles. So let's create yet another function. So spawn obstacles. Okay, let's go to the main spawner and let's actually just call the function for now. So let's call the spawn obstacles. Later on, we will have a lot more code here. But yeah, now it works just like this. Now let's go to the spawn obstacles. And here, what we want to do, we, people usually on the endless runners, they show that they want to spawn actor from class. But the problem with this is when you spawn this like this, uh, it's hard to like delete it afterwards, because now when we are running, the tiles are, are spawning and the old tiles are despawning. So we also want to despawn all the actors that we create, like all the obstacles and stuff like that. So this spawn actor is not the best way, because otherwise we would have to add the, all these to do, do some array and also check from every time check from there and delete them and it will be like it's not a good way so I will show you a better way so first what we want to do here we want to delete this and we want to get the base style reference okay and oh we actually have to go to the base style first so let's compile and let's go to the third person map and let's go to the pp base style and here let's go to the viewport we want to add a, a row, so let's search for a arrow. And let's call this spawn point one. Okay, it will be called spawn point one because later on we will add more of these points. But but for now we will only have one. So we have it here right now. We want to move it to the four hundred. So it's in the middle of the pile or this road mesh. Okay, so it should have location x400 and everything else as zero, like that. Let's compile and let's go back to the GM endless runner. Okay, now from here, what we want to do, we want to get from the base style, we want to get the spawn point, point one, get spawn point one. Ah, sorry, actually. We have this tile spawn point already here. So let's call this a spawn point one. Let's rename it to spawn location one or something like that. So we don't mix these those points. Okay. So let's go back to the GM endless runner. And from here we want to get the spawn location one. Get spawn location one. Okay. And from here, we want to get relative location. Okay. And now we want to get from the base style ref and we want to add child actor component. 
So we are not spawning the actor. We are actually adding it to the adding it to that base style. So when we delete the or despawn the base style, it will also despawn those actors, all these obstacles and stuff like that. So let's add a reroute to here. Let's move it to, for example, to here, so it's a little bit cleaner. Now we want to split this relative transform and also this rel relative transform location, like that. Uh, sorry, we don't actually want to do that. We want to do it otherwise. So let's recombine it back. So we want to add to this location. And let's connect this to here. And we want to split this second pin here. So split struct pin. Okay. And now we want to add to the Y because we want to also be able to spawn obstacles on the other lanes. So, okay, and it, this is moving on the Y axis. So first, what we have to do, we want to go to the EB third person character and we want to check the lane location, what we have set here on the uh, set lane location. So first lane is minus 260 and uh, second lane is zero of course and third lane is 260 positive okay so let's use those values so let's go back here and now to the y we want to get a select node we want to add a pin and we want to add, add those values here so option zero is minus 260 and option one is zero and option two is 260 like that and now to the index we want to get uh, sorry random integer in range like this and we want to make it mean zero and max two like that so it will get a random integer between zero and two and from here according to this values or this value it will add to this y location of the spawn point so let's compile and save now the last thing what we have to do is we want to go to the spawn tiles function and here at the end we want to call the main spawner function like this so now everything should work so let's compile and save and let's go to the third person map and let's play and it is not working so let's see Oh, I know why it's not working. Let's go back to the GM and test runner. And let's go to the spawn tiles function. It's not working because we haven't set uh, this next. It is only using the first tiles reference. So we will have to set this. When we spawn the new base tile, we want to also from the return value, we want to promote it to this base tile reference variable like this. So let's set it, let's connect it between here, let's connect it like this and from here. So now we are always setting it to the latest uh, tile. So let's compile, save and it should work. And still not what? Okay, I am so stupid, I forgot to add the actor to the add child actor component on the spawn obstacles. So we will have to click this and we will have to add the barrier blueprint like that. Let's compile, save, and now it will work. So as you can see, we have some obstacles here. First two are on the middle lane and the third one is on the right lane and the fourth one on the left. Okay. And if we play again, you can see they are always random. Okay. And later on, we will add a lot more code to those functions, so we will have much better like logic from the on the on the spawners. But yeah, this will work for now. So yeah, I think that was all for this video. If you like what you saw, please click the like button and subscribe for more. And yeah, hope you have a great day and see you on the next one. Bye.